Hey, welcome to part two of my four part series where I break down items that sell on eBay and share a little bit more information with you guys. So I started selling on eBay in late 2002. And when I started, I started with Ralph Lauren Beddings. I was working for a company called West Point Stevens. And at the time they manufactured all of Ralph Lauren's bedding. So we got in a shipment, uh, we got in multiple shipments actually of $10 Ralph Lauren comforters and they claimed that they were third quality. Now some of them were very damaged and others were just discontinued patterns that Ralph Lauren no longer made. Or they were patterns that Ralph Lauren was going to start discontinuing and at that time some major bolos were starting to be discontinued. eBay was really new, a lot of people didn't know very much about it. I was able to use my employee discount to get 30% off of the $10 comforters. So I was only paying $7 per comforter and some of them were selling for three, four, five hundred dollars Now, 22 years later, some of those patterns are still bolos today. So that's why it's really easy for me to spot some of these Ralph Lauren patterns when they're on the thrift store shelves or when I see them at garage sales or estate sales. Some patterns are harder to spot than others, but I think Ralph Lauren florals are kind of a dead giveaway. And again, part of that is probably just because I've been selling these items for over two decades. So if this is something that you want to learn, it might take a little while. It might take doing some research, but a lot of these florals look a lot of like look a lot alike. So I have a couple of Ralph Lauren items here in my inventory. So I'm going to pull those items and show them to you. A couple of these are bolos. Actually, I think all of them are bolos. Um, I might have one item that's new in the package that I can show you how to spot the packaging very easily. Um, but to start, I'm going to start with this pattern right here. This is Ralph Lauren Allison. And so a lot of the florals you'll notice are what they call it, what a lot of eBay resellers call it is cottage chic or cabbage rose. There's a lot of hydrangeas, a lot of roses. So this is Ralph Lauren Allison. And this is one of the patterns that was discontinued way back in the early 2000s when I was selling Ralph Lauren linens. And this pattern is still a bolo to this day. Now, diff this is what's tricky about selling bedding is that the comforter might be worth four or five hundred dollars but a pillowcase is only selling for about thirty or forty dollars or maybe less so it's really important to look things up what I have noticed is sheet sets especially flats and fitteds that's where the good money is other than comforters of course comforters more times than none are going to trump everything with pricing and also duvet covers. Now a duvet cover is basically like a pillowcase for a comforter, slides right in, and with Ralph Lauren, more times than none, they're gonna button shut instead of zip shut. And then the tags. So there, the older items have green and blue tags. I don't really sell too many new Ralph Lauren items, so I don't know what to compare it to. I'm really only familiar with the vintage items, items that have been discontinued pre like 2012. That's really where my knowledge is, is marked made in the USA. I don't know if that's going to focus. No, I don't think it's going to focus. but. Made in the USA. You'll also notice with Ralph Lauren pillowcases, some have a ruffled edge and some have a straight edge. Influence the price as well. So it's definitely when you go to price these items to list them, really do your research and make sure you're basing your price off of something that is exactly the same. You can end up losing money or you could end up with an item just sitting on the shelf because you overpriced it. So Ralph Lauren Allison, and then we have this pattern right here, and these are very similar so with this right next to it. Now, obviously they're not identical, but you can kind of tell that they bite off of each other. When it comes to photographing these items to list them on eBay, like this red sheet, what I do is I will fold it up really nice and take my initial picture of it folded up 
and then I'll take a picture of the pattern. So I will lay a piece out like this, do a couple close-ups of the pattern. I always look everything over for rips and stains, take pictures if there are any. And then with comforters, you wanna note if the stuffing has shifted. I ask that question a lot on eBay before people purchase. They wanna know if the stuffing is even or if it's bunched and collected in the corners. That's why I do not wash any of these linens. People are super sensitive to certain soaps and certain smells, uh, fabric softeners, so I don't touch them. Unless they stink really bad, then I'll wash them, but I have not washed a linen in years that I resell. Now shipping, I have made a couple videos where I ship out some big oversized Ralph Lauren comforters. And what I will do is I make sure I charge my buyer appropriately for shipping. And then I put the comforter in a big black um, contractor bag. I tape that up a little bit and then I put it in a box. And I put it in the contractor bag just in case the box gets wet, the item is protected. So whenever I make a video about shipping a comforter, people always tell me that I should have used a shrink wrap bag and I am very much so against using an item like that. Most of my Ralph Lauren comforters are selling for between two and $500. And I don't want my buyer to get an item that has been shrink wrapped and could arrive very wrinkled. It could shift the stuffing. And here I told my buyer that the stuffing was evenly dispersed and then when they get that, and then when they open it, that's not the case. I'm just trying to avoid an unhappy customer. And obviously if my customer was okay with paying the shipping price, then everything is fine. There's no reason for me to shrink wrap it down to try and get a lower shipping rate. I also always charge a flat rate for shipping the Ralph Lauren comforters. So UPS gives very deep discounts for big boxes because more than likely these comforters are going to be oversized. So that's another thing to look for when you're looking for Ralph Lauren comforters at the thrift store is kind of look for comforters that are overstuffed, oversized, and a lot larger than most comforters. Even though they're the same measurements, they you can just tell. It's a higher quality item, so it's going to look different than anything else that you see on the shelf. So back to shipping the comforters, what I will do is I'll fold it up for my picture and then I will, after I take my pictures, I'll fold it up as small as I think I can get, kind of smush it down a little bit and then do some just generic measurements of it. And I'll add two inches to that measurement to account for how big I estimate that box is going to be. And then I will pick it up, guess how much it weighs. You can always weigh it. I usually just guesstimate because something like that is going to be cubic rate shipping and not actual poundage shipping. So, and then I always go to pirate ship and I live in Michigan. So I'll put in the zip code 90210, see how much shipping would be to California to that zip code. And then I will add a couple dollars to that. And then that will be what my shipping rate is. And then I have had a few times where somebody has purchased an item like that from me and I can't print the label because it's going to a PO box. I'll send them a message, ask them if they have a physical address that I can ship it to. And 10 times out of 10, they've responded with a physical address and I've been able to ship their item. I don't have to cancel the sale and have them repurchase it, have them change their shipping address. Because they sent that to me in eBay messages, I'm covered if they open an item not received case. So something Another thing to look for that Ralph Lauren is really known for are these red and gold jewel tone patterns. So this is Ralph Lauren Jardinier. And this one is again, another pretty sought after pattern. I am making a Ralph Lauren um, pattern bolo list for you guys. Now this is also some tricky information. So Ralph Lauren also sold this fabric so people can make their own items. So sometimes some of this stuff is not made from Ralph Lauren and it is handmade. And you can always tell their bedding is very high end. So you will be able to tell, especially the vintage stuff. Nowadays, Ralph Lauren makes a lot of bed in the bags and I don't know too much information on those, but I know that they're not selling like how this stuff sells. So there's a really big difference between the comforter that goes with this set 
and a comforter that looks kind of similar to this that you could buy at TJ Maxx right now that has the comforter, the bed skirt, and the matching shams, and you can buy it for $150. So I'll pop up a image of a Ralph Lauren green tag. A lot of the higher end vintage Ralph Lauren patterns like this one here will have this green tag and a lot of times it'll be made in the USA of Italian fabric or made in Italy. It's always really important to look at those tags and add that information to your eBay listing, especially if it's an item that is made in the US or made in Italy. You always want to put that in your title and your description. It's just a keyword that will help you sell your item. So going back to the fact that Ralph Lauren did sell some of these patterns as a fabric so people could make their own items, people would buy size flat sheets and cut them up and make their own items with them. So this is a Ralph Lauren Allison Sham. Ralph Lauren did not make this sham with this chambray um, fringe. So somebody made this. This is the back of it. It has Velcro closing. No Ralph Lauren sham is going to have a Velcro closed like that. 99% of them for vintage are going to have an envelope closure. So I knew right away this was a homemade item. But I did sell this item. I listed it on eBay and I took an offer of $15 today. So items like this still will sell. You just have to include the measurements and let people know that it is homemade. Another pattern that I have here at the house is gonna be, this is Ralph Lauren Sophie. It goes along with Ralph Lauren Brooke. So that's how a lot of Ralph Lauren patterns work. There are, it's one actual set. There's a lot of complementing patterns that go along with one set. So all of Ralph Lauren bedding back in the day was sold individually. There was no bed in the bag. So they don't sell a comforter in this pattern. The pattern for this is called Brooke and I'll pop up a picture. So this is Ralph Lauren Brooke and this is Ralph Lauren Sophie. And Sophie was made to accent Brooke. So it gets a little tricky, but again, the more you study, the more you look at this stuff, the more, e the easier it'll be when you spot this out in the wild. So Ralph Lauren Sophie, and then it complemented Ralph Lauren Brooke. So there's different pieces that only came in Sophie. So for the most part, Sophie is just sheet sets. So flat fitted pillowcases, as far as I remember. And then of course there are curtains and there were some pieces in Sophie that would come in, I think it was either valances or the actual uh, panels, but again, it's been forever, so I don't really remember. Um, so that's the other tricky part, especially for patterns like this. This is like a Ralph Lauren medieval. You'll see that keyword used a lot. And there's even Ralph Lauren Guinevere, and they'll have a leopard print that accents Guinevere. So there are a lot of pieces that play off of each other. It can get a little tricky when you're looking online to actually be able to identify pieces because you could type in Ralph Lauren Jardinier and there will be pieces that pop up that are a totally different pattern just because those pieces were meant to go with the Ralph Lauren Jardinier. So it can get tricky. Google image is definitely your friend when it comes to this type of stuff, but it's not always correct. So what I will do is I will take a picture with Google Lens and see what pops up. And then I'll start plugging that into eBay and do my own research, see what I can find out and get a price, get a pattern name. Now condition, when it comes to bedding, condition is huge. Just because you see that two of these king size pillowcases sold for $40 does not mean that you can get $40 for yours. You wanna make sure that you know any stains, any rips, um, anything like that, and make sure you're basing your price off of something that is the exact same condition. Especially with bedding, just one small rip, one small stain can bring your item down in value by over 50%. I also mentioned I was gonna talk about Waverly and Cross Sills. There are two other brands that I sell. Um, again, it's just because those are vintage items that I know about. So when I worked for West Point Stevens, those were our competition and I worked in an outlet mall and those two stores were also in the outlet mall. They went out of business before West Point Stevens did. Um, but I would go shop over there and buy linens from them. And 
a lot of their stuff looks like Ralph Lauren. So basically, when I'm at the thrift store, I do not look for a tag on everything in the linen aisle. I'm just looking for patterns and I'm shopping by feel. So the same thing, Waverly makes a lot of stuff with a floral like this. They make a lot of gold tone, jewel tones. Cross Sell is very known for their jewel tones. Okay guys, I'm having like a complete brain fart. So I'm gonna throw up a picture. So if, if I see any bedding that has this little, whatever you call this, outlining, the, a sham or a comforter, that's a dead giveaway that it's something that I should probably look up. Now, sometimes I do get tricked. I'll hurry up, look at the tag, and it's a JCPenney tag. So it's not a dead giveaway, but it is something that you want to look at. You want to investigate a little bit more. Again, if it's oversized, if it's heavy, a lot of Ralph Lauren, a lot of high quality bedding is heavy when it comes to the comforters and the shams. So that's also, um, that's also a giveaway for me. I will always look those items up if I find the tag and it's Cressil or Waverly. What I usually do is Google Lens. Again, Google Lens is, I use Google Lens at least 40, 50 times when I'm outsourcing for the day. So I will shoot a really quick picture, see what comes up, and then I start plugging it right away into eBay, seeing what I can find out. And then once I get a pattern name, I will again plug that pattern name into my search bar. Um, and then filter by solds and see what it's selling for. This has a black tag. And this is made 100% cotton made in India. And then it has the Ralph Lauren website. This has ralphlauren.com. So obviously I'm going to assume that these don't have the Ralph Lauren website. Let's see. No. This just says Ralph Lauren 100% cotton made in the USA. And that's it. And then it has the size. That's the other thing. So if you're unsure what the size of an item is, usually Ralph Lauren linens, it's going to be right here on the back of the tag. So on the front of the tag, it has a little bit of information about 100% um, cotton where it's made. And then on the back is going to be the washing instructions and then the size. And if you're unsure, let's say somebody cuts out the tag, but you know this pattern, you know this is Ralph Lauren, you can always measure and then go from there. Just Google what are the measurements of a standard pillowcase, a standard or queen size pillowcase, and then king size. When it comes to shams, there's standard, king, and European. A European is gonna be a square, it's 20 by 20. The other ones, I don't know off the top of my head. I think a standard is 20 by 26. Okay, this is what I mean by if you see an oversized comforter on the shelf at the thrift store, this is a king size comforter. And it's not that the size, because again, most comforters are gonna have the same measurements. It's more about the stuffing and how heavy this thing is. This is a very heavy comforter. This is probably 12 pounds. So again, jewel tones. And this is also a very popular design with Ralph Lauren. This is one of the bigger Paisley designs. And again, this is Ralph Lauren, Brianna Paisley. This, I picked this up in one of my videos. Right now, I have this, I had it listed for $1.99. But I'm running a sale in my eBay store. Everything's, I think, 15% off for the next week. Just has, it's 100% cotton. It says it in a couple different languages. Made in the U.S. Um, and then it has their address in New York. And then on the back right there, king size. Something else that I always look for, but I've only been lucky enough to find maybe three or four times is anything that is Ralph Lauren Southwest design when it comes to bedding. Now, now there are a couple of patterns that were discontinued in the mid 2000s. So around 2007, 2008 that are big time bolos, but most of the Southwest designs are earlier than that. They're from the nineties. Thing to keep in mind as well is that 
A lot of these patterns are going to have tablecloths that match, whether it's for the small tables that people used to have on the side of their beds or for an actual dining room table. They'll also have shower curtains. A lot of these patterns will have the matching shower curtains, throw pillows. And when it comes to throw pillows, that's another one where how it was like Ralph Lauren, Brooke and Sophie, the throw pillows might not match the exact main pattern. They will have another pattern name that ties in with that pattern that kind of sort of matches, but not really because Ralph Lauren is not very matchy matchy when it comes to the bedding. Some Ralph Lauren throw pillows can sell for big, big money. Now I've never found a Ralph Lauren throw pillow that wasn't down filled. So I'm going to assume that, and I hate to say it just in case I'm wrong, but I th I'm pretty sure that all Ralph Lauren throw pillows are down filled. None of them are cotton filled. Now, if they are cotton filled, they're the cheaper ones. They're not the ones that are going to go with any of these older Ralph Lauren um, patterns. Not talking about anything that is new. Now, by no means am I saying that these items are easy to find as well. There have been months upon months that have gone by where I have found no Ralph Lauren bedding and I have a pretty good knowledge of it. So if I see it, I know what I'm looking at. And like I said, there have been months upon months where I have found no Ralph Lauren bedding. Now, even though some of this stuff is a big time bolo, um, you can look in my past videos more than likely they're going to be on Facebook or TikTok though. So one of my recent purchases, I say recent, it was months ago, um, Ralph Lauren Hawk Springs. So this is a bolo and it took a while for this to sell. It sold for really good money. Certain pieces sold right away. So this is the other thing. Size matters. Size definitely matters when it comes to bedding. A twin size comforter is not going to sell for what a king size comforter sells for. So make sure you take that into consideration when you're purchasing and pricing your items. And with Ralph Lauren, when it comes to comforters, there is no full size and queen size. It's a full queen. So if you have full size, so if you have a full size bed, you're buying the full queen. If you have a queen size bed, you're buying the full queen. They aren't two separate sizes. I bought a Ralph Lauren Hawk Spring comforter set. I paid $50 for it. I drove an hour and a half to pick it up. I made a lot of money off of this set. How much? I don't remember. Like I said, it's probably been six months, maybe a little bit longer. The comforter, I believe my buyer was all in over close to $400 for it. So it took probably four months for that comforter to sell. The sheet set is what sold right away because I had a flat and a fitted. So sheets are pretty desirable and then I would say the comforter after that for most patterns. So I just sold the last of that set probably within the last 90 days. So if I have what the shams sold for because the shams were the last to sell, there were some European shams, I'll pop it up right here. But if not, I won't pop it up right here. Sometimes even though they're bolos, even though they're gonna sell for big money, these items might take a while to sell. So I'm not guaranteeing that if you find this, it's gonna sell right away. Just like the comforter that I just showed you guys, I bought that. It's probably been for sale now for about a week and a half and I have a ton of action on it. I have watchers, I've had a lot of viewers, but it's still sitting there. Something could have a 100% sell through rate and it could still take 90 days to sell because if there's, we'll just go with 90. If there's 90 listed, 90 sold, that means one sells a day. So that means that it could take your item three months to sell with something having a 100% sell through rate. So it's really important to be patient and understand that sometimes items take a while to sell. And bedding is, and Ralph Lauren bedding, even though it's, some of it can be a bolo, it can take a little while. So it doesn't just stop here with Ralph Lauren home items. I sell a lot of Ralph Lauren glasses, a lot of Ralph Lauren vases. Um, Ralph Lauren flatware is on my bucket list. I dream of finding some Ralph Lauren equestrian braid flatware. Here's a couple of solds up here. This is definitely something on my bucket list. And this was something that was being discontinued when I actually worked at Ralph Lauren itself, right before I went to go work for West Point Stevens, working at the Ralph Lauren outlet. And at that time, the Ralph Lauren outlet still sold Ralph Lauren home items. I remember having 
this pattern at the store and I just thought it was so beautiful when I worked at Ralph Lauren and at that time Ralph Lauren still sold Ralph Lauren home items at the outlets that's where I worked was the Ralph Lauren outlet and I remember just looking it up one day out of curiosity and I couldn't believe what it was selling for and to this day it still holds its value. Last week I did a hair tool video so if you missed that definitely go check it out. I just released my hair tool bolo list on Etsy and on my Etsy you'll find a couple other bolo lists that I have over there like cleaning products, discontinued bath and body works, um, discontinued beauty products. And then over on my Patreon is the only place you will find my discontinued perfume bolo list because Etsy pulled it for copyright issues. I had a long list of designer name brands that I didn't want to put in the bolo list because it's kind of obvious a Versace or a Gucci perfume might be a bolo and you should look it up. So I just listed names like that and I think Etsy's AI bots kind of just tagged my item. So it got pulled off of Etsy. So if you're interested in the perfume list, you have to go over to my Patreon to purchase it. And I'll link everything in my bio. So, so far I have done the hair tools. Today we talked about Ralph Lauren bedding. And next week, I think I'm going to touch on vintage Barbies. From 1959 to 19, we'll say like 70-ish. After that, I don't know anything. I'm totally clueless, but before 1970, maybe like 73, 74. I have a pretty broad knowledge of those items. So one day I'll make a video about my entire eBay journey. It's been a crazy one. But for a couple years, I sold with my dad because I lost my eBay account and we sold nothing but vintage Barbies and vintage GI Joes. And my dad was the GI Joe guy. He knew all kinds of information on G.I. Joe's. He did what I did. I kind of threw myself into the vintage Barbie thing, learned as much as I could, and we definitely learned a lot as we went. I would list everything. We kept everything at my parents' house, and my dad would ship everything out. We did that for a little over two and a half years. So I think that's another topic that I have enough knowledge on that I could share with you guys. I know a lot of times Barbies can be confusing, especially because there'll be a year stamped on a Barbie and it doesn't necessarily mean she's from that year, it just means that's when her body is patented. So it causes a lot of confusion. So I think that would be a really good video. I wish I had some vintage Barbie stuff, but as soon as that comes in, it's out the door. I probably won't have too many visuals for that. I'll be using a lot of screenshots. I think this is where I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, that bolo list will be available early tomorrow morning on my Etsy and on my Patreon. And again, it's just gonna have a long list of patterns with pictures and some pricing. Because there's so many different bedding pieces that go with the pattern, it's hard to throw up prices. So I'll just put in probably comforter prices. If you find the pattern, definitely please do your own research before you price an item. As far as the Ralph Lauren um, bedding goes, um, these items have been bolos for over 20 years. So if they're on this list and they're a bolo today, more than likely in 10 years, they're probably still gonna be a bolo. I will be going live the same day this video comes out, which is Saturday, July 6th. I'm gonna be going live at 9.30 p.m. on Facebook only though. And I'm gonna be setting up my whatnot auction that I'm gonna be running on Monday, totally getting out of the reselling shoe game. So I'm going to be auctioning off all of my good shoes. I will link that in the description of this video as well. If you guys are interested in checking out any of the shoes, I'm going to start getting that sale all set up. I'll probably have a couple of clothing and um, like jackets. I know I'm going to stop selling vacuum filters and I'm just going to stop selling a lot of things. So all of that stuff will be in my whatnot sale. Whatnot user, definitely bookmark the show. Um, if you're not, you can sign up with the link in my description as well. But again, thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of you and I will see you next Tuesday on my next video or maybe tonight on Facebook Live.